All right, so today for science, we are, I'm gonna move this back down again so that this is lower. Here we go. So we're reading for our um, Inside Living Things book. And let me focus, so much better. Some pathogens still succeed in breaking through outer defenses and threatening an organism's health. They can infect cells and spread disease. At this point, an organism's immune system enters the battle. In animals with blood, white blood cells recognize the invader and quickly make more white blood cells. This large group of white blood cells attacks the pathogens and kills them along with the cells they have infected. Meanwhile, other white blood cells produce antibodies, chemicals designed to kill certain kinds of pathogens. The antibodies cause the pathogens to clump together. As clumps, they are easier to recognize and destroy. Did you know? All organisms have the same way of defending themselves against disease. Trees ooze sap to heal cuts and keep away invasive bugs. Plants and insects use chemicals to ward off microorganisms. Even tiny bacteria use special parts, of spart special parts to engulf and destroy other bacteria. Rivers of nutrients. Let's take a closer look at one of the other important systems. So I'm going to make this out just a little bit. The circulatory system. This system is like a vast series of interconnected tubes. In both animals and plants, the liquid running through these tubes delivers nutrients and other substances in the cells. It also hauls away the cell's waste products. In animals, the liquid is blood, and in plants, it is mostly water. In animals, the tubes are miles and miles of blood vessels. Vessels called arteries carry blood to the cells, while vessels called veins carry blood away from the cells. Arteries and veins are connected by tiny vessels called capillaries, which deliver antibodies to cells and take away waste products from cells. In humans, blood vessels circulate nutrients to all parts of the body. In plants, the phylum does this job. Interesting. The liquid part of an animal's blood is called plasma. Plasma is mostly water, but it also carries red blood cells, which carry oxygen to the blood cells and the white blood cells, which help fight off disease. Blood also contains platelets, which help clot blood and stop bleeding when you are injured. That's a white blood cell and that's a red blood cell. It's funny because they don't look anything alike. Insects have blood too, but it's green instead of red. That's because insects' blood doesn't carry oxygen. Insects have tiny little holes in their bodies that let, the oxygen, let in oxygen and release waste gas. Fascinating. Blood has one of the most vital tasks to perform. Not only does it bring oxygen to the cells from the lungs, but it also hauls away the gas called carbon dioxide and other waste products. Cells create this waste when they convert food and oxygen energy. The blood carries the oxygen di carbon dioxide back to the lungs where you release it when you exhale. Other wastes are delivered to the kidneys and released when you go to the bathroom. In plants, the xylem tissue is made of the cells and vessels that move the water away from the roots and up to the leaves. Phylum moves nutrients made by leaves to other cells. The sap, which usually comes from the phylum, helps trees fight infections and heal wounds. Plants release waste through their leaves. If the circulatory system were a factory, it would get high marks for cleanliness, neatness, and efficiency. Last two parts. An an in, anim in animals, blah, how many times can you read that? I was so caught up in the picture, I wasn't focusing. This says this is a pig heart and this is a human heart and they, they're very similar. In animals, the heart is the in engine that runs the highly efficient factory. The heart is a powerful muscular organ that is about the size of your fist. An adult heart beats about 70 times a minute. It's a little faster in teens and children. 
Each beet moves blood alongside the, all those vessels, delivering nutrients and to remove the waste from cells throughout the body as it performs a life-giving task. Math moments. If a human lives to the age of 80 and his or her heart beats an average of 70 times a minute, how many times will his or her heart beat through a lifetime? How many minutes are there in an hour, a day, and in a year with 365 days? So 365, so you would have to do, if it says 70 times a minute, so it'd be 70 times 60, that's how many are in a minute, and then equal X, and then you would take X and times that by how many minutes are in an hour, so 60 again, equals b um well let's put y and then y is that would be how many an hour times 24 would equal z and then how many hours you could actually convert how many hours by just multiplying 365 days times 24 hours or sorry times yeah 24 hours and that would get you, you could figure this out and multiply that by, multiply this by 80 and then multiply it by this answer. I just did all of that off of there. I didn't even notice that. Sorry. Conclusion. Multicellular organisms are, organisms are very complex machines. The human body alone has trillions of cells, making up as many different types of tissues that combine to make dozens of organs organized into systems that all work together. Other living things have f more or fewer cell tissues and organs, but they all must work together so each organism can live. No, sci no wonder scientists and doctors often specialize in one other type of a cell. Understanding the complex system that is your body will help you enjoy a long, healthy, li healthy life. Scientists study the structure of living inside structures inside living things to better understand how the whole organism can be their healthiest. So for my science journal, I need five facts from inside living things. So I did some yesterday, mainly focused on tissues, and I am going to ask probably a few more questions today. So today is week seven, day four, Thursday. And <clears throat> For my first one, how, I'm gonna make this taller again so then you guys will be able to see this. All things. So I apologize for the shaking just briefly. There we go, and now I will make it crisp. There we go. So, how many, white blood cells does it take to kill slash attack a virus? Question mark. They don't really say, I wonder if they actually know, like, if you have this, because I know that sometimes they talk about if you have a heightened blood count, what would that be? Like, what, what does it mean to have the heightened blood count? Next would be two. I wonder if they will have an antibody which is um, a chemical designed to kill a certain type of pathogen. If they will ever have an antibody for COVID-19, question mark. Number three, people breathe out I want to, I'm going to say exhale. Let's say that's the scientific word. 
People exhale carbon dioxide, which is called CO2. And it says that the last thing that I, I we have two more. Arteries carry blood to the cells. This is arteries carry blood to, I'm going to underline that, to the cells. And it says veins carries blood away. Veins carry, oops, away from the cells. So I have some questions and I have a couple facts. Veins carry blood away, arteries carry blood too. Isn't it crazy how your body is so like designed to do so much stuff perfectly? And I'm gonna put my title on the top of this, Inside Living Things. And I'm going to underline that title because that's what you do with the book. All right. Perfect. Oh, I need to score this. I have capitals and in, in mark here. I have I, capital for the COVID. So plus two there. People exhale carbon dioxide. I think this is important and I wrote this down because I know that I used th that in high school um, and this thing right here, when they write down the elements and what that is, this element compound. Arteries carry blood to the cells. That's a good definition. And good to know that arteries are different than veins. Veins carry blood away from the cell. Capitals and in marks. All right, plus 10 out of 10.